Okay, a quick, well, relatively quick card here. Nothing like 15 minutes or something like that, but I want to try this card that I really like doing. Um, I really like the composition and whole look of it up top and below, but I thought we would do it with printable holographic um, vinyl sticker paper with gold down below. I really like this combination a lot uh, and just the warmth um, it has. It just has a pretty cool look to it, but I thought we'd try this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so the printable uh, vinyl is not holographic cardstock, it's printable vinyl sticker paper, okay, with printable being the keyword here. You can um, apply water-based media to it and it will stick to that surface, so I'm using the water-based white pigment ink here, the Brilliance one, okay? All the other ones are oil-based. You can try it out and see if it would work. Um, it's not going to apply and stick to um, cardstock, though. You gotta get the, the printable vinyl. The printable vinyl makes it um, possible to use this type of paper. It's designed to go through your, um, your inkjet printers, you know, and be able to print out on this emulsion coating that they have on there. But um, it's not something that's, uh, you know, designed to take oil-based media. Um, I don't know, like I said, you can try different things. I'm, I'm hesitant to say something definitely won't work on it. Um, but uh, give it a try. Okay, so, but the water-based medium, though, of this white pigment ink, this white brilliance will allow me to, this has been applied and it's pretty thick on here, but I can touch this right now and it's really adhered to it very well. Um, it's just a really fantastic combination here of media as far as the technique goes. Um, like I said, they, they didn't intend for this uh, sticker paper to be used like this, but um, it's just one of those, uh, I don't know, things that's, that's come up that um, really allows for that, okay? So it's just a good thing that there's a water-based pigment ink out there and it, Brilliance is the only one. Hello, Candy. Uh, white pastel pencils, if you want to go directly on that, that's not going to uh, adhere to it, but you can probably use the uh, pastel pencils on the white brilliance and that'll probably stick to it. Uh, are you, I mean, you can use a different, you know, I'm just using white brilliance on this uh, paper, but you can use other colors of uh, brilliance on here and then apply the white pastel over the top of it. Let's say if this is going to be greens, I'm going to be using um, some green tones in this area down here. I don't know, I, you know, if I had a bunch of different um, shades of uh, brilliance, I might use green just inherently on here, you know, because white pastel on white is not going to show up at all. Unless you just want to refine something, then maybe it would. But the thing about the pastels, any kind of pastels, of course, we're going to have to spray seal it, right? You know, in order for it to um, adhere. So I like the fact that I don't have to use any type of um, sealant over the top of this surface right here when I just use it um, with uh, the white brilliance and things like colored pencils, you know. It's, there's no loose media on here. It's just really adhered um, very nicely. And also, um, one of the things is it's it's very true to the um, the source material. So um, spray sealing can often it, spray sealing can often improve. You know, even what you've applied, um, it makes things look a little bit more saturated. But the thing is, um, sometimes it's it's good to know. Um, what something's going to look like after it dries, just after you apply it. That way you can have a lot more control over it. Okay, so that's what this is looking like. It's just a big slathering of, of this white pigment ink. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna try to put a little bit of a, oh, kind of a, a transitioning, or a transition layer of pigment ink. Okay, so it's, 
it's really thickly applied down here. That's going to allow for me to uh, allow for the application of colored pencils to be a lot thicker down in this area right in here. This little area that I'm going to try to transition in this lighter application is just going to represent some cloudy mist or something like that. Hello, Patty and Linda. Is one brand of white pastel pen? I don't know, Candy. I only have the one, um, that Carbothello. And, oh, I don't know. That type of pastel pencil, it was probably named by brand when I bought it probably 30 years ago in school. Now, you know, art supply, the art industry has been around a lot longer than, you know, the paper arts industry. So, you know, Winsor Newton and, you know, the typical, you know, uh, art suppliers out there have been around a long time. So, you know, and art supplies are typically used by everything from the student, you know, level of uh, user to the professional. So, um, you know, that Carbothello was probably something that, uh, you know, one of the professors used. So um, they probably had that by brand um, on the thing, as opposed to just saying buy a, you know, a white pastel pencil. It was probably Carbothello. So at that time, you know, it was probably the one to, to get um, in their mind. And I figured they had a lot of experience, so. But I don't know, you know. Uh, I don't know how much things have changed in the art industry in terms of um, availability. And uh, I don't know, maybe new types of media out there. It's going to be one of those things, if we're going to find out, you might have to be the one to <laughs> to let us know about it. You just want something kind of nice and soft. Um, I guess, but not too soft, maybe? I don't know. Think about it. The softer it is, the more um, types of surfaces you can apply it to, right? Because it's more malleable and, um, you know, you can probably use, it needs, it requires less textured, you know, texture um, to be applied, but if it's so soft, then, um, you know, you don't want to, um, be using it, and then it's just, you know, it just goes down so fast that, you know, you, you just get through a few projects, and it's, it's done, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, you whittle it away. So I don't think, I, you know, I don't think any is gonna, anything's going to be that soft, though, because it has to be hard enough to go into that, um, into that, uh, you know, the carrier of that, you know, wood. So it probably can't be too soft, you know, in order to be, order for it to be used that way. Is this it right here? I have, I have, I had two of them, I think. All right, so that's my base right there. Okay, just a little foundation. It's been really th um, thickly applied right in that area. So I'm not just coloring with it um, with that white pigment ink, but I'm really kind of building it up right down here. And this is all, it's all completely dry to the touch. It's really uh, pretty, um, you know, amazing. Looks like I have something sticky on this surface down here. I don't know what that is feels like some uh, spray adhesive or overspray or something like that. Let me try to get that out right there. Look at this, I'm wiping this away and it's still, you know, that white pigment ink still is adhered to it pretty good. Okay, let me get that off. Oh, this feels like, a, like some rubber cement or something. I have no idea what that would have been. Still coming off, okay. 
Let me get a little bit more right down in this area. Okay, so I'm just going to go off that same composition um, that I did before. So what I used on that was um, the boulders with lichen like this, and I have it coming down from at an angle like this. When you introduce um, kind of angles into, into scenes, it gives uh, the scenes a little bit more kind of visual movement. Not that, you know, we have to have that in every scene or something like that. If you do it more um, straight, you know, straight across like that, it can give, you know, the scene more kind of visual stability, though, too. So it just depends on kind of what look you're going after. But I want to go for a little bit of variation in this one. I, I really like that look there. So we'll go like this. All right, just a little bit of it right there. And um, then it looks like I used the rock down here. Okay, now on this one right here, I, I used some white pigment ink underneath these rocks in the water, okay? Just to give them a little bit more dimension. I'm going, to, I'm going to make this card much faster, so I'm not going to bother with that white pigment ink down here. I'm just going to go into it with just straight stays on impressions for my rocks. I want this card to go relatively fast here. So that's one of the things that I just get rid of um, in terms of the uh, entire process here. Hello, Sandy. Good afternoon. Hello, Jeannie. All right. Stays on. Switching to stays on here. And maybe I'll bring in, you know, a couple different images into this scene. I was thinking about, I used reeds. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that again, but I'm thinking about leaves instead, or the oak branch for like a as a bush, maybe. I don't know, maybe that won't provide enough contrast. I'm looking at the other scene that I did. Yeah, I'll figure it out here. Okay, so this is the lower portion like this. So you see how I use this on this side right here, but the top portion, those boulders, or on the, uh, the left side like that. I kind of like to, you know, have this kind of visual path of a uh, serpentine kind of S-curve type of thing, usually, um, for the, the viewer's kind of uh, visual path that they'll take when looking at the scene. You're kind of making a little bit of a, a path for them it's really kind of uh, apparent in those, um, like the monster maps we were doing on the 11 by 17 pieces where there's actually like a trail running through, you know, your scene. But even in smaller scenes, you can kind of create a, it's not so definitive. It's not like a trail or something like that. But when anyone looks at a, at a piece, you know, they're, they're usually starting somewhere. There's some usually somewhere something in there that gets their attention that they look at first and then they do some sort of visual path um, you know in looking at something you know I mean naturally if it's a one by one inch inchy or something like that there's not very much of a path there going on but even a quarter page or a half page um, you know they're looking in some order and you you're kind of director of that um, you know, direction. Um, whatever the route that they're, you know, they're usually taking. So um, keep that in mind. You know, it, it's not something that you have to kind of, you know, devise and things like that. Um, but it's one of those kind of secondary things that, um, I don't know, 
once you start doing this a little while, you know, and if it comes down to little options like, okay, where should I put these rocks or something like that, then it's like, I can put it here, here, you know what I mean? Then you can think about, okay, let me see, you know, where's this little pathway, you know, that, um, you know, that I can create doing that. It's not something that I think about, you know, ahead of the, uh, the, you know, the general, the scene in general. It's just one of those little detail things that um, you can have fun with. If it's just, you know, I mean, wherever you put these rocks down here, it would be fine in other words, but it's like, okay, you know, I can, I can block things off, you know, in terms of the visual path, or I can kind of create a little bit of a visual trail, you know, and make things a little bit more interesting. That's where that type of th you know, little detail comes into play. Okay, so uh, rock cluster here. I'm going to use a little bit more of this rock cluster than I think I did before in my other one. Or maybe I'll do more of these down here. Um, let's see, let's go with this. This is one of those things I wasn't really thinking about in terms of the usage of these rocks, but it, it's just come. It, uh, it just kind of naturally happened. Um, I was thinking about mostly being used on like earth, but it, I think they work fine for um, this representation of, uh, you know, them being in the water. I didn't do so much of a textural um, base for them, like where it looks like grass or something like that, in other words. Which in some of my rocks I do, you know. All right, so stays on. I'm cleaning my stamps off a little bit with the stays on inks. It's so much easier to just remove it. So I, I don't have stays on cleaner. I just use, you know, water. And as long as I remove it, um, you know fairly soon after uh, usage. It just comes right off with water. All right. And let's use the smaller one here. I'm glad I started using stays on ink on this lower portion though. Um, just for the fact that I don't have to spray seal this lower portion, um, uh, kind of makes it nice. Let me see, let's do, I'll put these out like that. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that as my last one. I was thinking about putting it right here too, but I don't want to block off you know, like so much of the reflection of the trees that are going up top there. Okay, let's see. All right, so this is what we're looking at right now, like that. Okay. Let's add a little bit of a, a little bit more texture. So I don't want those large rocks, but um, we can use some smaller ones. Where did it go? Here we go. Tiny rock, small. Let's add some of these rocks. I really like using these rocks right at the uh, the water's edge, right around up here. And then I like adding them around my rocks in the water as like a little transition uh, texture. 
so adding these rocks down here usually you know you have if you see something like this it's going to uh, give the impression that this water isn't like super deep here Not super deep, or, you know, just the water is really, really clear, you know, where you can see the bottom, you know, you can see beyond the surface. All right, so let's see. Okay, let's take a look at that. Look at all those little rainbow kind of reflections um, showing up in there. And also this um, gold patterning right here really reflects back up in here so you get this reflecting down in here but also the lighting from uh the gold is reflected back up in this and it just keeps bouncing back and forth when you use um you know metallic over metallic like this in this uh reflection card type of format right here all right so let's go ahead and build our um grassy uh textural pattern up here and then we'll plant our trees into that um, section okay so I use the uh, the boulders with the lichen right here and I'll I'll place another one up here but I want to use the um, grass up here first before I stamp out that second um, kind of background row of rocks okay all right so we're just going back to the brilliant sink right here um, that's it for the stays on stays on you just use in the uh, the lower portion I, I don't know. I guess you can probably use it up here, too. I think that would be fine. Okay. So this grass right here, I'm kind of using it like... I'm not using it like that when I'm doing like a small portion. So I'm just using the top of it. So I'm just kind of pressing down on the top portion like that. Okay. Now, okay, now right around here, I'll use more of a, you know. I, my, I'm going over, I've got so much. My surface is no longer flat. <laughs> See that right there? Okay, look at this. This is what was underneath there. I've got all these um, leaves right here underneath my uh, piece. I'm using these leaves and uh, things like... Uh, glitter you know and it's that chunky glitter so it's kind of i'm getting these uneven impressions lately and it's because i've got my surface right here is just isn't flat anymore let me get some more blotter paper okay just some more scrap paper so if there is anything in the layers here it'll compensate a little bit more this still doesn't seem very flat here let me see yeah it'll have to do for now okay so that is that and we'll come back in with this let me use a smaller version of that just for a little bit of scale This one's the mossy rocks, not uh, boulders with lichen. Hello, Caroline. Did I say hi to Jeannie? Hello, Jeannie. I think I did. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I think I did. Because I think I was thinking when I saw you, oh, I'm wearing black again. <laughs> All right, a couple of rocks right there. Okay, and see this little bit of a this mist over the top of it. I can extend that up a little bit more, but um, that is just going to represent like a little bit of fog in the background. All right, now let's see how this goes here. I'm going to use the um, Art Foamies. This is a half page piece right here. So i um, just pushing um, scale a little bit with this larger version is pretty is fun. But if uh, you only have like the smaller version like that, which is pretty big, you know, it's 
winter ash large in rubber, um, just use that or, or use this one in combination with the small one if you have it. You know, you can just go like this one right here and then use the smaller one right here. You can go with this and then, I don't know, use half of it, you know, like that or something like that. It would just look like it's going over, you know, in the back of a slope or something. All right, this is a... Uh, Anytime I'm doing these art foamies, I can never tell if uh, they're all inked up or not because it's uh, it's black foam. So anytime I'm using black ink on it, I'm, I'm always a little bit confused. Or not confused, I, I guess uncertain if it's uh, inked up or not. Okay. And also the foam's absorbent too, so um, unlike rubber, you know, um, some of that ink probably absorbed absorbs back into the foam, I would guess, but you know, I don't know for sure, but that's what I would think. Okay, let's go about right here. I'm masking off some of this area down below um, so I don't get the full trunk because it's supposed to be in the grass. I've often thought that if I have, um, if I came out with like a set of uh, stamps for kids, like young kids, um, I think I would do them all in Art Foamies versions. Just because the Art Foamies are going to contour to um, different types of surfaces a lot easier than the more rigid um, rubber stamp versions, you know. And I don't know these. Rubber's probably stronger. You know, you don't want some kid kind of chewing on these uh, art foamies. Uh, I guess you wouldn't make them for like a toddler, but you know, um, I don't know, maybe your, you know, elementary school age kids and up, perhaps. All right. So, anyways, there's one tree right there. It didn't print out quite as black as I'd um, want, but enough you know it's fine I probably need to re-ink this uh, let's see and we'll put this one behind these rocks right here under mask slightly. Okay. I've got glitter. One of the things about the glitters it is all over my um, my tack and peel. It you know what I mean the tack and peel is like a magnet for it, of course. Tack and peel, if you don't know, is um, is a material that I use on the tops of my acrylic blocks, um, and it apply. Uh, uh, it um, provides um, a temporary, you know, um, mounting uh, surface for uh, bare rubber stamps. So it's a little, it's tacky, you know, just like the name indicates. Okay, there we go. See that one right there, stamped out a little bit um, darker than the foam version. Or I don't know, quite a bit, huh? Um, let me see something here. So this is the black um, brilliant ink, and the white brilliant ink allows for the use of colored pencils on here. Look at that rainbow pattern in the back of there. I love that. So I mean, see this right here. This. Um, I can just go in here and just darken some of these trees like this with the colored pencils because um, the black or just the brilliance ink in general provides a little bit of a, a base layer kind of texture or tooth, you know, as they call it in the art world for the colored pencil to grab onto. Okay. This uh, type of, um, 
printable vinyl sticker paper is otherwise it's you know it's like plastic or something like that so it'd be hard to use that this directly on there you might get a little bit of transfer if your pencils are soft enough but having that ink uh, that water-based pigment ink surface oriented pigment ink at that sitting on the surface like that and it dries and sets up it really allows for um you know the transfer of this waxy style of colored pencil to adhere to it really nicely so see that right there so i just kind of darkened that in right there i didn't darken i'm not going to darken every single branch but so that really took care of that it's it's really it's a super this combination of um brilliant sinks and the printable final sticker papers is is really really um to me it's it's just such a fun and dynamic super user friendly um combination of uh media and i really love it it's just the ability to use colored pencils on this type of surface right here is really amazing because you can't use colored pencils on like um holographic card stocks or holographic foil or just foils at all you know metallics because they're not going to stick to that type of surface it would be like trying to use colored pencils on glass but you lay down that brilliant sink over the top of it and you can get this really kind of soft colored pencil type of um look onto um an otherwise really super dynamic and metallic surface like that so it really provides a really nice contrast um textural contrast uh, to me because you know colored pencils generally to me um, in most types of usages it, it has a really soft look to it all right so see that right there and, and look at this right here when you're when someone's opening a card you know in the you know holographic over reflective it's it kind of it there's a lot of movement and motion in the card itself and it's it's lighting kind of you know without having light in there like leds or something like that and of course it's rainbow so there's like every color of the rainbow in there all right so here um one of the things i forgot was um i forgot some additional um textures down here right at the water's edge let me see I was thinking about using on this one right here i use the reeds right along here and down here but i thought i would go let me see let me try to get my bearings on how this might look but i was thinking about using um a softer where to go leaves right down here instead it could be like a little sapling or just like a little bush or something like that I don't know if they'll, it'll show up as much as the reeds, though. The reeds are very kind of directional and definitive. This might just kind of blend in the background a little bit more. But let's go ahead and try it, you know. I've used the reeds. I use the reeds like, I don't know. It seems like it's on 80% of my scenes. Okay, let's get the stays on. Yeah, both inks are by Sukineko with uh, you know, the brilliance and the stays on. The stays on, I mean, uh, the brilliance have always kind of been a little bit concerned if it's going to be around for you know very long um when i found out that uh you know after not using it for like 20 years or something like that um and you know i started using it on the uh the foils and holographics and things like um the iridescent papers like star dream um started posting those on places like facebook's like What's brilliant sink, you know? It's like, oh, what? You know? And a lot of people were 
saying that, you know, if, if people haven't been stamping for like 20 years, or, well, I don't know, whatever it might be, 15, 20 years, they might not have heard of Brilliance Inc. But usually, you know, most people had kind of a Brilliance Inc. pad. But it, okay, so if they had it, they didn't, they didn't use it anymore, you know, it was the, the feeling that I got from seeing all the responses um, to the posts. So it's like, uh-oh, you know, anytime you see kind of a response like that, um, you know, from the general stamping public, um, you know, you don't know if that um, media is going to be around for very much longer. So I know, and, and, and then especially when you start seeing um, some um, colors um, being discontinued, so... Um, yeah, some of the some of the colors have already been discontinued. I don't need all of them to be around though. Like um, white, black, and maybe the the gold and silver. As long as they keep those ones, I'm good. And I'm guessing those ones will probably be the the more popular of their of that line. But uh, but I don't know. Uh, definitely black though, you know. Black in any ink line is usually the you know the you know the most popular. Okay, these leaves over here over the top of this boulder is aren't going to show up that well, but it just kind of darkens it a little bit, so it's kind of like a little head start and um, shading. I want to do this comp composition too. I was thinking about doing it, but trying to make it look like there's wind going through these trees. And I thought I'd have some leaves kind of like look like it's floating in the wind by doing not on the uh, holographic, but just on um, some regular um, cardstock. But I would do these little swooshy types of. Um, streaks with my inks in the background and then I would have like a leaf or two up there and then I'd have some you know down in the water like where it's falling off the trees so we'll see how this one comes out but um that'll be another future scene perhaps okay so let's take a look and see what this uh, might be looking like right here would add the tiny rocks and leaves if you were you uh would add the tiny rocks and leaves if you were using them leaves today but i didn't add any tiny rocks uh i'm not sure were you uh are you asking me something there linda i wasn't quite sure let me see The tiny rocks and leaves, if you were using them? Huh. Uh, you might have to clarify there. <laughs> All right, so that's the base right there. Okay. Now we're going to add in, we're going to flesh in this whole area up top here. Okay. And we need to give structure to all of these rocks. Okay, so um, I have just some, some greens right here. I mean, I don't want the, you know, I, this is fall and everything like that. And, you know, there's got to be a, like a springtime type of, you know, application of greens in here or anything like that. So we'll kind of mute them out a little bit. But I do want to have some um, color in here. Um, just to oh, kind of contrast against... Uh, the background and have it stand out a little bit more. I mean, right now it's just, you know, it's texture. So, um, so we need some tones in there. Okay. So I've mentioned this in the past, but I normally work with my colored pencils and cardstock from light to darker tones. Um, but on this white pigment ink, we can apply the colored pencils on there because there's enough tooth to do that, but we can't build up a huge amount of um, colored pencils on this type of surface. It's not like we're doing it on, you know, um, a matte cardstock that has a lot of 
um, tooth to it or something like that, or watercolor paper, or, you know, just papers that are kind of made for colored pencils. You know, they're textural, usually. Um, so I'd say about three layers, you know, of uh, colored pencils work pretty good on here in terms of blending. So if I work too many of the lighter tones too early on here, and I work through lighter tone, like green, medium green, darker green, and then I want to go to black too. Um, sometimes I can't apply some of those darker tones in there to, you know, to really develop my shadows because I'm trying to color wax onto wax and it's just not transferring. So, okay, so that being said, sometimes I go into my darker tones a little bit earlier. Um, I mean, you can still use a really light application of them too. So, I mean, this is like, you know, the green that I could be applying, but I'm just kind of applying it like that right now, okay? Okay, now let's vary this a little bit. We'll try to go for um, a variety of green tones throughout here. We want a little bit, you know, we want some variation in, in this uh, grassy area. You don't want it just all one uniform green, okay? You want to have a little bit of light and shadow in there. All right, so something like that. There's no kind of perfect application. If, if I was to do this again, it would probably be completely different or a completely different area. But what I have on here is some areas of green. There's white, there's green, there's white, green, white, green, green, white, like that, okay? I don't want it white. I'm just leaving room for my other, you know, green tones to add in here, okay? Okay, this is a little bit of a warmer green. This is like a olive green, so a little bit of yellow in the green, warmer green. So we get a little bit more of a a varied green hue. I'm gonna come up and do it with some of my rocks with this um, warmer green, I think, as well. I, I, I can't even, I put some of that green from, you know, the other green up in my rocks, too. We'll do this, we'll come in here a little bit. We'll put a bit of, a, like, moss or lichen on those rocks. Something like that. All right. And here's the very, a really light green. Okay. Like so. Okay. And let's go back to the darker green here. Or I tell you what, let's move to like a brownish tinge. Let's let's try these ones right here. This tan. It's like a light flesh and dark brown. Let's use those in those um, grassy areas here too. Let's see. Uh, oh, would you add the rocks and leaves together, or just one or the other? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Um, are you talking about the rocks and leaves? Are you talking about the leaves, the actual leaves that I'm going to be adding in here? Or are you talking about these leaves right in here? I mean, it could be one or the other. Um, or you can add both. You know, it just, yeah, it just depends on what you want in there. Um, if you want a little bit more variation, then you go for the, you know, uh, and dimension, then I would probably add both. And if you want it a little bit more sparse and open, then you add one or the other. Or you just add less of one, you know, one time and more of it the other. So I don't know, there's no, there's no answer to that one, Linda. 
It's just a personal preference. And it's not, for me, when I'm doing these cards too, it's not necessarily personal preference for this composition in making it the most ideal. Sometimes I'm doing like a composition, like I'm doing a composition right now that's based on this one. And I'm just kind of mixing it up just for the sake of it, just so it's not exactly like this one. But maybe I think this one looks the best, but I just don't feel like doing it again, you know, the exact same way. Um, you know, because sometimes I get, yeah, you know, just I do it, I switch it up just kind of out of boredom or something like that, you know, or just for the sake of some variation. So, yeah, it's, you know, if I was doing, uh, I, I mean, if I was mass producing something like for a Christmas card or something like that, you know, I, I might not take the time to do everything so different, but you know, there would probably be some little bit of variation in it. Uh, certainly for something like this, you know, doing just, uh, just this follow-up one, I just want to make it different than the last one. I'm not, you know, it's just like one, you know, one extra thing or just switching up to the leaves instead of the uh, reeds or something like that. It's no, it's, you know, it's for, so it's for no other reason than that. Just, uh, just different, you know, uh, from a previous scene, not necessarily better. Or sometimes, I'll, sometimes I know, you know, something that I'm doing, if it's like a follow-up card too, um, I think, you know, it would probably be better the other way. But again, I just want to see something different. Okay, so this is my black here, and this is going to give, um, really kind of anchor everything down, give it dimension. You see, I put that kind of shadow in those rocks right here. These rocks right here, I mean, they look okay, but I'm going to give them a little bit more depth by adding in some grayscale into it like this. Okay. And I like to make my transition zones into my water darker. So I'm going to darken in this lower portion. And I'm trying to transition this too. This coloring is going like this down at the base, but then as I go up, it's getting a little bit lighter, you know, like that. Okay, so it's darker on the bottom of this rock and, or part of the rock, and then it's just transitioning up and it's getting a little bit lighter. See this the rock right here, transition it like that. Okay, so you get a little bit of that lighting coming from above, but it's just this gradual transition. And that represents kind of a, a rounded rock. If it's, like a real flat rock and like, you know, like shale or something like that, this whole thing might be uniformly dark where it's, you know, kind of flatter up top like that, you know, and then you'd have this area right here, a little bit of a different shade. Okay. And if you're ever trying to decide, wait a minute, you know, so wait a minute, is this rock flat or is it rounded or something like that? You, you know, it's something that, you know, you can designate. You can say, okay, well, if I do this kind of transition zone, then it's a round rock. And if I do this, then it's a, you know, kind of a more flat sided rock too. It's just, you, you know, create whatever you want it to be, you know, in some cases. It might be a round one and one scene that you do, but it might be a flatter, uh, you know, a flatter one in another one, or it could be a flat version of it in one side of your scene. And then the other rock, you know, which is the same impression could be, you know, the opposite or some or a little bit different, you know. See this right here, the, this is the same rock right here, but let's just shade this one a little bit differently like that, just so it doesn't look, you know, so repetitive like that. Okay. So I put the, you know, a little bit more shadow up top like that. And if you want to change the silhouette of it, we can put like more leaves or something in the background and stamp it right there. You know, yeah, you can do all kinds of the different things. Yeah. Let's create a little bit of a stronger um, horizon right here. It's not like deep into the your horizon or, you know, super distant right here, but it's just, um, you know, this little, 
slope, I guess, the edge of this little grassy slope right here, just to create a little bit more um, contrast between this and this background right here, or that little bit of mist right back in there. You know, like that. And I think this little bit of a kind of a darker slope like that will it'll read better in the uh, the reflection like you know that area like that so let's do that same type of thing right over here on that grass let's create a little bit of a stronger edge like that I'm kind of going for a little more of a scribbly type of application here. I'm usually going for something a little bit more um, kind of, you know, softer blend um, here. But I don't know, maybe I'm getting a bolder the more than I use my colored pencils here. Or maybe I'm doing it because, you know, it's starting to, um, you know, get a little bit harder to apply kind of a softer addition because you know the surface is getting really um, built up with uh, you know colored pencil wax at this point in time so maybe I'm having to use kind of a sharper kind of application I don't know uh, but that's what's happening <laughs> well you know when you do these videos you try to analyze you know kind of what you're doing kind of just you know uh, I don't know, whatever, instinctively, I guess. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, why I'm doing something, you know, when I'm doing these types of things like this, or I don't know, or be aware of it. Like I wasn't even thinking about it, but yeah, that's probably what's happening. I'm having to use a lot more pressure now too um, on this, um, you know, my colored pencil build right here. Okay, let's see. Let's get a little bit more greenish tinge into this. Let's make this, you know, that kind of that look right here of just the grayscale. We can get it a little bit richer with a little bit of additional hue in here. That. Okay, and I think grass is like missing something to me. Um, Let me try a little bit of this golden color. Usually the grass is, you know, in California, it's like this golden color and then like browns, you know, most of the year. But we've had a lot of rain over this last uh, know, couple years. So the hills are really green and a lot of wildflowers and things like that. Okay, let's see. Oh, you know what this is missing right in here? Oh, okay. Um, it's too uniform a texture right in there. So, all right, let me see if this is going to work or not. I don't know if this is going to... It's really hard to stamp anything right in here at this point in time because it's all this is like really... A heavy wax buildup right here. Um, hello, Jen. Hello, Valerie. Uh, no, these are um, these are just your Prisma colors, Valerie. That's a good question, though. But these pencils are being applied on top of the Brilliance water-based pigment ink on top of the printable vinyl sticker paper. Printable vinyl has an emulsion coating on it. It just started raining outside. And um, that emulsion coating is designed to take water-based inkjet printer inks, okay? So if you use the water-based Brilliance ink right on the surface right here, you can see there's a little bit of that white still in the background right here, where I've applied it, a thick slathering of it. That uh, It creates kind of like a... It, it creates almost like a copy paper type of 
surface on there you know what i mean copy paper is not ideal for you know media and everything like that but that's what i kind of liken it to it it creates kind of a that surface that can accept colored pencils okay and the colored pencils can't be like super hard but the prisma colors work on here but some of my prisma colors are a little bit too hard where they don't apply on top of the brilliant zinc very well so i'm not coloring the holographic sticker paper i'm coloring the the, bril the, the dried brilliant zinc and it dries like instantly you know after you apply it okay so what i was getting at right here with the um Okay, I was going to use some more leaves. I'm going to use this um, little um, winter brush, it's called. Okay. This is a little spin, spindly of a image right here. I'm going to mask off these rocks a little bit. And let's get see if I can get a little bit of this uh, variation in back of that rock and that looks better so adding another layer of imagery let's do that right up here on the horizon too or i just keep saying horizon it's like this little slope right in here like that okay makes it a little bit prickly but and it's also something nice and sharp and crisp in that colored pencil kind of background you know, which is really soft um, in appearance and texture. All right, let's do something like that. That looks a little bit better, like that. All right. I'm thinking about now. I'm thinking about those oily colored pencils if we had kind of an oil like an oil pastel pencil we could probably apply it over the top of the brilliance ink i'm just wondering if the brilliance ink would you know provide enough of a surface and the kind of thickness for that oil pastel to um absorb into that surface and for the oil medium to kind of dry on the surface um i'm not sure it, it's one of those things you, you know we got to do some uh, additional um testing of uh things but i did use one of these is a versifying clair and of course that's a uh, oil-based pigment ink and it dried on here just fine I'm not sure if this is the one. I, I have another um, test print thing, so I don't. You know this this printable vinyl sticker paper. I mean, I, I haven't been using it very long, and I don't know. I didn't see anyone else using it, so I don't think there's been a lot of tests on it. You know, by others in terms of media compatibility. Um, so th there's a lot of things that might be working um, that I just you know I haven't tried before. I, there are some things that I've tried though. I think I tr I might have. I, I don't know. There was something that just didn't adhere um, very well. Let me see. Let me get a little bit more tone into this tree here with the colored pencil. All right. So let's see what this is looking like right here. Um, so this is going to be a reflection card if you just joined in. And um, this is a piece of um, gold cardstock down below that's going to be represent kind of this little pond area for this scene like this. And this area down below has been stamped and stays on on top of the uh, um, gold cardstock like that. Okay, but you have to get your bearings here because um, what I'm getting is this reflects light back up into here. So you have light hitting it, you know, from above when you're looking at it, you know, just like this. Is it dark enough or anything like that in the shadows and stuff? But 
when you add this element down here, it's also now it's reflecting some additional light, you know, from below. So you might have to make some adjustments in terms of uh, adding, you know, some additional darkness or something like that up here. I, I think it looks pretty good, though. I don't think I need to do too much. Let me add a little bit more tone here if I can. It did apply there. I started rubbing it really hard and it was like, oh, that black did go on there pretty good. All right, maybe I haven't like pressed really hard into a, you know, a thickly applied uh, colored pencil area before. Maybe I don't know, but that one really applied. Now this one's getting resist. It's resisting. I can't really apply too much of this green. Maybe the black is a is a softer, you know, pencil in the prism of range than this green. I don't know. Let's get a little bit of a like a bluish tone into uh, some of these rocks. This is a little. What is this? It's like a steel gray, S uh, slate gray. Close. Okay, let me just add this into some of these shadow areas. I still want to retain some of the the lightness on top of these rocks like that, like it's, you know, reflecting some light. So I'm working my shadows mostly. Uh, well, I heard one of my prof art professors one time, he wasn't, didn't say this in front of the class or anything, but he was just talking, you know, to uh, another student in the class, but he was saying, you know, sometimes the brightest shadows or the warmest um, colors are in the shadow areas. You know, and what it meant by that was um, when you get lighting, when you're outside outdoors or something like that and looking at something, you know, the if it's a really bright light, it's um, kind of bleaching out the colors, you know, but in the shadow areas, you know, it's not so, um, you know, the, sh the colors aren't getting washed out like that. That's why, it, like, you know, the colors outdoors, they're brighter. They're not lighter, but they're brighter, you know, in terms of intensity, kind of on a like an overcast day or early morning, you know, then something like, you know, high noon or something like that. So I'm trying to develop my tones right here, like in the shadows, like, so the green grass is right here in the shadow areas. You see, it's a brighter green. It's darker green too, but, um, you know, you can add kind of a little bit more richness in those areas like that. All right, this is kind of interesting. When I look at the uh, the lighting, like you see, it has that little bit of a lightness right next to that. It goes like red, but then where I pressed, I guess maybe because I pressed into that, so maybe this tree is like a little bit indented in there or something, or I was pressing like into this, you know, like that. So, you know, any little kind of change in elevation on this type of paper you know if it's kind of indented in a little bit it's, there's a little bit of a ridge so it's kind of getting a little bit of a light area right next to that um, tree which is kind of interesting all right let's take a look at this again let's see what the area right there is looking like see i kind of darken this little um area in right here okay but I'm not just doing it because of how it looks like right here. I'm just kind of reading it down here. See that little dark ridge right there, that real reflection from right here to down there. It just stands out a little bit more, you know, for the reflective. What aspect of this, uh, you know, card construction. So um, it's a little detail like that. You know, you add it in there if you want to. It's just one of those little things that I like get a kick out of doing. All right. All right. So let's add in our little 3D leaves down here, and that should do it, I think. I'm trying to think if I want to add in a little bit of like mist or white back into here. Sometimes that works really good, but I don't know. I might leave it as is right in there. I think it looks okay. <laughs> if I put some white in there, it's going to obscure some of my shadow work in here, which I usually like to do. But on this one, I think I might just leave it as is. 
All right, so let's add in um, some leaves down below. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour these into something else so they're not all over my desk like that. Um, here, let me just use, I'll just put it on a piece of cardstock. All right, so these are little mod, uh, model like railroad leaves if you haven't seen this i was looking at a photograph of uh that i was posting on facebook and i had this like in the corner i thought people are gonna think this is like something else you know do i need to state it you know what i mean this little green bag of the little you know baggies of uh you know something green in it <laughs> I still posted it, but I think in a, on a follow-up uh, little video, I, I kind of removed it. All right, let's go with a little bit of that green. Um, a little bit of a brighter green here. Maybe I won't use too much of that. That. Um, ochre, kind of, you know. What I like about this, too, is that these little leaves, um, they're, they're different shades, you know, of, uh, the, that same color. So you get quite a bit of variation in it. At variation in size, too. Some of these are, like, crumbled little pieces. And here's red. I think there were other packs that might have had, um, I don't know, maybe like eight colors or something like that. Someone looked a little bit too bright for uh, uh, what I thought would be my purposes. And most of these too, I almost returned these because when I received them, I thought, oh my God, if you look at, um, one side i don't know on a couple of these it's like it was like powder so i thought everything got crushed you know because they sell these in these bottles too i was going to return them for the bottles but then i don't know i, I started using it and i was like oh some of these little broken pieces they come in handy and it was it was just um it only looked like this one especially looks like powder on that but on the other side it's all straight just like a bag of chips you know uh, the bottom part is always kind of broken it you know broken uh, pieces all right so um let me see here i'm not working around any kind of figure or anything like that in this one like a little person or something like that that i want you know don't want obscured down here although i can add in something in the background if i want to but i'm just going to add in some leaves um see this reflected area down here where it's reflecting this rock it's kind of dark so sometimes those lighter leaves you know might be a good idea to put in the um the shadow areas like right around in here where that's reflecting that dark rock right here so it's like an inch down or something like that and this one there's a dark area right there so maybe you know the lighter green or the lighter yellow on that might stand out a little bit more. Like if I put a dark leaf right here, um, it might not stand out very much because it's in the shadows. So, you know, the little types of things like that you can um, think about in terms of placement of this. Um, let's see. Got a decent little... Um, dollop of a uh, uh, your glue I try to vary it a little bit you can see like that and I'm gonna put some of it right around in my rocks like this where those little leaves might kind of cluster around your rocks as they're floating around You see, see, I'm doing that thing that we all tend to do at uh, 
I have all these little dots like spaced, you know, the same distance from each other. You gotta kind of have it vary it a little bit. Uh, someone said that we seek pattern or something like that um, when we're doing things. And uh, I don't know, you want things a little bit more, if you want it to look a little bit more natural, then uh, try to, uh, I don't know, vary it a little bit more. Okay, so this little glue um, really adheres, um, it really anchors the, uh, the leaves down on the surface really well when it dries. I mean, they are really like stuck like, you know, like iron on here practically, um, what I find. And some of these leaves are a little bit flatter than others. Some of them are curling. I, I try to go for the flatter ones. Or if they're curled like this, you know, don't use it like this, you know, try to use that back side um, of it. Like this one's a little bit curled one way, so oops. It just shot out somewhere. I don't even know where it went. Okay. But anyway. So see, I'm using these little lighter ones a little bit more. Like in this upper area. Yeah, let's see, that's too many yellow in that little area. Uh, let's go for a, let me see if there's a light green, maybe. And here's a kind of pale red. I know some of these are a little bit smaller too than the other ones, so <laughs> if you really wanted to get really super technical, maybe you'd use the, uh, the larger leaves kind of closer to you down here on the lower area and the smaller ones in the distant, you know. You can play kind of scale um, against each other. I might be moving too slow for the amount of uh, glue that I laid down. Yeah, I guess it's still a little bit wet. I seem to be going for most of these golden ones for some reason. I mean, I did that up there because they were lighter, but I don't know. I don't know if there's something subconscious, you know, going on. Oops, I just broke that leaf right there. I'm going to use that little tiny bit of it right there. I'm going to go for some of those little um, bits now, just for a little bit of a... I don't know, whatever, shape variation. Like I said, when I got the bag of it, I thought, man, I don't, you know, I don't want a bunch of those little crumbs. But the crumbs uh, kind of come in handy a little bit. All right, let me see what this is. Uh, did I get everything? And then there's one more right there. I get that little chip of a leaf right there. 
Oh, there's one more right there, too. Get this little scrap of red. Yeah, when, when they're all kind of exactly the same, I don't know, it might look a little bit repetitive. Okay, I mean, that looks kind of weird like that. When we just look at this as yeah, you know, a piece instead of a component for, you know, the reflected area, but you know, on again, let's see, let me get my, I probably should have uh, taken a look, but that is how that looks. Let me see. Can I see those leaves in the distance right there? Yeah, they stand out a little bit. You can see it more in motion like that, huh? Like these leaves right back in here, like that against that background. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see it like that. You can see these leaves in the foreground. This is what I really like. I like this kind of movement of these objects yeah, on the water. Now they're kind of like floating on the water when we're losing these three-dimensional things like this. But I like that kind of what do you call it? Parallax in there. That's happening in there. Like these reflected things against that. Those things floating in the water. It looks really three-dimensional. I think like these little things like this, you know, just adding... I, I mean, to do a scene like this is really fun to do, and I, I like this scene in itself. But just when you add in this simple little area down here, you don't even have to add in the leaves, but I mean, this card right here took like, I don't know, you can stamp out those objects in there in like three minutes or something like that. And you just throw this down here. Now suddenly you have this kind of real three-dimensional looking whatever uh, construction. And it really doesn't take very much, you know, longer to add in that. Of course, you're making, you know, your card an interior type of presentation opposed to, you know, something that's you know, going to be on the exterior like this. I mean, this looks kind of cool too, and you can open it up and whatever, you know, choose your greeting in there, you know, uh, whatever. Happy, happy fall. <laughs> but this one right here, it's like one of those things, it's like, you know, it's like a kind of a big, you know, kind of a, it, it almost reminds me of like a pop-up book or something like that, you know, where there's a, a certain excitement to opening it up and seeing what's on that next page. You know, it's like, you know, the, um, whatever the presentation or the, uh, you know, the surprise, uh, that's in there like that, you know, in this one, in this case, it's like light coming out from there and look at that. See that water down there too. One of the things that's pretty fun about the holographics um, over the metallics like this, it's kind of a mirrored, it's, it's a mirrored impression, right? But see this coloring down here, this area right here is not the same thing that's going on right there. This is like cool and this is like warm, you know, it's kind of weird like that, you know, because you think it'd be reflected down there and it'd be a mirrored reflection. That's what I thought, you know, when I started doing these things, but it's like, oh, you know, that holographic down there is like not a mirrored version of it. It is in some ways, but in some ways not. And I guess it's because that light is kind of bouncing back and forth between the uh, the two things. I don't know what they call it, refraction or something like that. Or I don't know if that's the thing that's doing it, but you know, where it's not a mirrored thing um, or just a simple mirrored version of it. Look at that like that. And that's like a little horizon glow up in that top area, like, you know, like this little area right here that looks different too. So um, that's really fun. And I, I don't know, it just looks different at different angles too. And like I said, you know, these little leaves are pretty fun to play around with like that. Um, a, totally a different um, kind of uh, feel from this one right here, right? It's basically the same composition. Now this one right here, I did add that white underneath my rock impressions down there. So it looks like much more dimensional. These rocks almost look like they're standing out, you know, from the surface, but you know, it's flat, you know, but it really looks dimensional. And that takes a little bit, you know, that would take an extra 
I don't know, 10 minutes of work to do that. But these rocks down here could have had, you know, a little bit more dimension had I done that. But I want, wanted to make this one much faster uh, to do. So anyway, it's like, you know, kind of muted and I don't know. It's almost like a very quiet, serene piece. And this is like something, you know, not so, you know, not so quiet, you know, and pretty loud, but I don't know, really fun to do. One of the things, you know, this, there's a lot going on up here. One of the things, if I would do this again, I would probably build up a little bit more cloud in the background like that. And then I'd probably have some clouds from above. So it's like, you get this little bit of a, like a band of, um, that holographic showing through like that. The, this might be a little bit like, too much, you know, of that uh, type of thing going on. If I'm sending this card out to a kid, though, I'm having that as loud as possible. You know, if it was a card for, uh, you know, like a child, you want it like as dynamic as possible um, in there. And like I said, okay, so this one right here too, you know, we can kind of add in a little figure in here too or something like that, and I think that would be okay to do. But um, I might do that with this one. I'm not sure. This other one, I thought about kind of visual focal point, but I wanted this one to be really quiet. And, uh, I don't know, just like as is, you know, without a, like a specific visual focal point. Um, but on this one right here, I'm not sure. I might add something to it. Um, anyway, let's see here. That is that. Um, Jeannie wears mostly black too. It's time for that, uh, like, uh, your tight time to bust out those uh, tight eye shirts, Jeannie. You know, your colorful ones and like that. Uh, I don't know, a lot of like bling. You know. <laughs> And then see if that influences your your pieces, of uh, what you stamp out. Uh, let's see. Talk talking about the tiny leaves on the reflective part. Thanks for answer. I, I struggled with that to do today, and thought you could add some. Yeah, I, I still you know I don't know what I'm doing with the uh, the leaves quite yet. Oh, okay. So anyways, if if you haven't seen me do these um, cards before. Um, what I do is I use a spray adhesive to adhere these into my piece. Now this is a vinyl holographic sticker paper, so you can peel this off, okay, and adhere it in here. But that adhesive on this vinyl sticker paper, it's so aggressive that if I just touch it down, it is like stuck and I can't move it around. Um, so. I like to just, uh, I like to use my spray adhesive because it's a little bit more forgiving. It's not r removable and repositionable um, of a, I'm trying to get this. Um, it's not repositionable um, spray adhesive, but it's not as aggressive as the inherent sticker paper adhesive, okay? So I just lay that down like that in there, and then I'll use a spray adhesive on this lower portion um, as well. But yeah, Linda, I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing with the leaves in terms of an ideal kind of uh, application of it. I'm still learning about kind of clustering too, about what looks good on these pieces. And of course, I haven't used the leaves just in a non-reflection card before. Um, so... I don't know, I have a lot to learn with that. Oh, I do want to have some like leaves like floating in the wind or something like that. Look at this holographic. I like this look right here too. Looks like a little, like a horizon and this is like the darker sky up there. But um, yeah, still learning about how to do that. And we want to add in some other types of three dimensional elements too um, into these pieces. And I think it would it would integrate the leaves a little bit more too. So on this holographic one too, um, one of the things I was thinking about doing, or that could be done on this um, composition right here, you know, with all these uh, different colors in here, is uh, adding, 
probably like the gradient um, rocks down here. I didn't know if I wanted to make this like super three-dimensional too, but we have these gradient um, glass pieces in here, these little shards of glass down here. I used them in like a, like a beach type of scenario. I, but I think I did it in a reflection card once too. But, um, you know, the, these this gradient, um, hol uh, not holographic, but this gradient um, crushed glass. This crushed glass is completely, like, soft on the edges, by the way. Someone asked me if it's, like, really, like, shardy where you can cut yourself, and it's, it's not. This, this is, like, crafter's glass, okay? But having these different colors, right, you know, down here... Um, kind of sparkly and reflecting, uh, reflective, like down here amongst these rocks might be kind of cool. You know, it's like a three-dimensional little thing popping up in there. And that might be kind of neat um, to do. The one thing about reflection cards, though, this glass does stick out, you know, higher up than um, like a, you know, flatter style of leaf. So if you're mailing this to someone, um, you really want to put like a piece of... Uh, Oh, I would put like a piece of chipboard or something like that in between here um, as you mail it off, just so you don't get that crushed glass putting dents into um, this top portion up here. It's not really so important if it's like cardstock or something like that, but if you put a dent into this paper, that holographic paper, it'd probably show there would probably be this little change in pattern. You can see where there's like indentations in this type of paper there, so... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I, yeah, if I want to do that on this one in case I get, you know, I don't want to make it two dimensional. I don't know, maybe I'll do that on another video or something like that. I'll add some of these in there. I might get the uh, urge to it uh, when I look at this, you know, a little bit more. Um, I, Mary, I, yeah, just a little impromptu live here. I just felt like doing, uh, I felt like doing this ever since I did this one right here. I wanted to do the same composition again, so. And then I was gonna do it in a little bit of a different feel. I was gonna do it just where I didn't add in the leaves like I did on this one up here with all those colored little dots. And I thought, oh, you know, I haven't done a holographic over gold in a while. So I wanted to see what that would look like, especially with these kind of warmer leaves that I just got too. And I wanted to see what those would look like on this gold um, reflective cardstock like that and since I was doing that the gold reflective like I said I you know I thought eh, let's try it in the uh, you know the holographic uh, sticker paper I love I love doing um, the colored pencils on the uh, the printable vinyl uh, sticker paper did I say holographic cardstock uh, colored pencils on uh, printable vinyl holographic <laughs> There's two, the, the, the printable, the, that paper has too long of a title. I end up saying printable holographic vinyl sticker paper, like, you know, I don't know, 15 times throughout the course of one of these uh, streams like this. But I don't know, it makes for a quick, relatively quick card. You know, this is like a, we can probably do this composition right here. If we're doing it on a half page, I would think, I think I can do this scene in about, I don't know if I can do it in a half hour, but maybe, you know, I would just have one tree in there or something like that being reflected down into this gold cardstock down there. It'd be a couple of impressions with that uh, gold. And I think we can come up with almost like a fast, you know, quick card version of this scenario right here. When I'm doing these tests like this, I want to see what it looks like all the way around. I usually do half page um, versions of it, but we can definitely do a, like a, you know, faster a quarter page card really quick and if I did it in a quarter page card I'd probably throw in like a visual focal point like a deer or something like that into it just to kind of liven it up a little bit more you know and you can still add in like those little leaves or something like that in there so uh, so Linda you got that leaf punch too right several people got those little leaf punches you know when um, uh, Froggy Fresh posted it into uh, the um, Facebook, Stampscape Facebook, she showed a little photo of it. So it's like a little hole punch instead of it being a big circle punch like this. It was like these three little leaves or something like that. So it'd be kind of cool too. You can do, um, 
like in a scenario like this, if you don't want to use like these, uh, whatever, matte, you know, painted little leaves like that, you could punch out some leaves out of the holographic sticker paper, you know, the hole punch, and then you can add in like holographic little leaves down here and they're little stickers so you can just like sticker them down there that might be kind of interesting so i didn't buy that uh hole punch but maybe i'll have to uh, pick one of those up or something like that uh let's see valerie has one shui i purchased on amazon i'll have to say i don't i'm not aware of that brand there but they're uh they're real they're oil um colored pencils and what pickup tool are you using for the leaves? Oh, okay, so on my leaves, I just found that this little speary um, scratch knife nib is just working for me because I, I kind of like little, I kind of spear it a little bit and I just, you know, release it like that. But um, the, you know, the, um, the gem, picker also picks up very well like that you know just your standard um gem picker so this is the marvy jewel picker and it's you know the dual sided one like that this one right here i kind of you know wrecked it because i punched through too hard so that rubber isn't on the tip anymore but uh you know your standard jewel pickers work pretty well i think when i was finding initially though you know, there, this has a little bit of um, tackiness to it just because it's just bare rubber. So sometimes when I was like adhering the leaf to the surface and then I picked up like this, this is still kind of like tacky. So I was like lifting off the leaf off of the surface like that. So uh, just for me, I don't know, it seemed like just initially I haven't done a lot of testing of it. So that little speary, um, you know, um, scratch knife nib worked really well because it's going into this tiny little point and it's almost like using a pin. Oh, so speaking of that, maybe using like a, you know, like a sewing pin or, you know, like a little pin would probably work really good. You just take a pin and then, you know, drop it down. I use my other finger just to lift it off. So it's, I have a really low, super fine point of contact on those little leaves. But yeah, like a pin or a needle, you know, now that I think about it, it would probably work really well too. This is really comfortable too, like a little, you know, it's like a little, you know, it's a calligraphy nib just with the uh, scratch knife um, point on there. So, I don't know. Um, and I just grab that, you know, it's not like a tested tool or something like that. I just grab that, uh, you know, spur of the moment and tried it out and it worked pretty well. The tiny rocks and leaves. Yeah, a little bit of texture on texture, huh? With the tiny rocks and leaves, Linda. Um, yeah, I don't know. Which one do you guys like better? You know? It's like a different mood, huh? Completely. This one's like a little bit more... I don't know. When you look at it like this... When you think about, okay, we got silver cardstock, we got little leaves or something like that on the cardstock, you know, and it's being reflected. It's hard to imagine like something like this is understated, but when you compare it to the holographic, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's quite different. I mean, this is the thing that's f funny too. You know, you can do these different compositions like this. And this is what I'd really recommend doing too. If you've, you know, you've been seeing Extamping for a while and you kind of want to, play around and kind of test out your, oh, uh, kind of push your, um, whatever, narrative abilities or something like that to do the same basic composition, but to do it in different media, or it can just be the same media, but different times of year, seasons. Seasons are a perfect thing for scenic stamping. You do something like this. In, oh, we should do a winter one of this one right here. Um, but you can imagine just the bare trees and like blues or something like this. And this would represent ice. I won't use the leaves down there, but um, 
you know, this would be um, like reflective ice down here. You can do it like a full moon right back in here. Or you can even do it on like a blue foil paper or something like that. And you can stamp out your trees in white over the top of it. So it's reflecting light on dark. That might be kind of interesting, you know, to do a moonlit one. But yeah, yeah, you know, just to play around with, you know, your same stamps, but just to give it a different season or something like that or look or whatever. And, uh, you know, you might, you might like one or, you know, over the other more or the first one that you did was your first kind of instinct on how to use those. So, um, but it just kind of pushes things. And I think, you know, the things that you learn in doing those different kind of, uh, thematic statements can you know you can apply to other scenes going forward too um yeah i don't have the punch i bought the oh you bought the leaves okay there were a couple people that i thought that bought the that bought the punch after uh like that okay <laughs> so very were you able to find those leaves uh with no problem uh where you are I'm thinking, so here's the thing about the, uh, uh, oh, the snowflakes on the ice. That's a great idea. Yeah. Here's a, I got one other thing too. I was buying like other glitters, but, um, okay. So yeah, very, um, I got this recently, like, I don't know, like a few days ago. It's, and it's, um, white glitter it's chunky makeup body but i don't know it's for crafting too but there's these clear kind of little crystally they're hexagonal but it's almost like it's like powder too when you touch this it's like it's like soft as like you know um it's like sawdust or something like that but i bet you i can put some of this on not on gold i'd do it on silver probably but that might be kind of a nice little touch on the silver one in a winter setting too i was thinking about doing like a like snowy little you know bluffs or something like that and then using some of this on the uh the snowy areas but in a reflection card if it was down in some of that water just to give it a little bit of variation i think that would be kind of cool because this would reflect i think a little bit different you know uh than the uh silver but yeah if you had like snowflakey things too that would be like phenomenal in a reflection card i think i i might even have some other snow See, Brett, you know, you got me thinking now. Uh, and here's this other thing. Iridescent flakes. You know, maybe that would be kind of... I've never used these things, so, you know, I haven't thought about um, usage. So this is almost looks like that white um, glitter. Yeah, do they call it glitter, even if it's clear? I guess so. But this holographic one might be kind of interesting over the top of silver in a winter type of setting. Um, how reflective it is. This thing's probably like this thing's probably like 30 years old. I don't know, maybe 20. For paper making, add iridescent iridescent flakes to pulp. Oh, is this for paper making? When drying paper by heat, iron on side with fewest flakes. <laughs> Uh, does people do people make paper anymore? It seems like people were making paper. Uh, you know, stampers were making a lot more like handmade paper for a while. I haven't seen that in a while. So we'll try some of that. You know, I don't know. I'll try some of that at some point in time. The thing about that I wasn't quite sure is how you um, what adhesive do what I use to um, stick that type of. Uh, glitter or that you know that holographic one to the surface like this you know what i mean i don't want to be you know you do a dot of this or underneath one of those it's like a super super thin little flake you know what i mean uh i i think it's almost like a matter of like where i might have to use like some diluted glue or something like that and just paste like a really thin layer you know where you want to sprinkle a little bit of that down i don't know 
I don't know if I want to put like one flake of glitter down like at a time like I did with these leaves or something like that. You know, it seems a little bit tedious. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, but I do want to try something out like that. We want to have like, I want to do some kind of thing where it's like, like snow, the way it looks, you know, it's always trying to achieve that kind of that spirit of, uh, you know, the best part about you know, a certain substance in this case in light, you know, and how it really sparkles like that. Uh, if we can capture some of that, that would be really cool. Well, I know that Amazon, yeah, but are you, you're not buying it from like Amazon, you know, Amazon US there or something like that, but uh, that uh, there was plenty of that uh, types of, uh, um, uh, those types of supplies though, very in, uh, Norway there. What about like, like, like wood grain, you know, uh, placemat paper, you know, can you get that out your way? Hello, vintage scrap girl. What could thick enamel embossing powder do for a scene? I don't know. Can anyone answer that one? I haven't, I don't know if I've used enamel embossing powder. Maybe, so, one of the things about thicker types of embossing powders that might be, I, I the way that I think about embossing powders in scenes is it can, you know, I'm always trying to go represent depth in a scene, okay? So like these foreground elements down here, if I want something to really stand out and pop out against the background, um, I like the idea of them um, being dimensional. So maybe a thicker thing like your foreground elements, you know, that are actually dimensional and sticking out. I don't, I don't like embossing on top of foils though, just from my experience, because, um, you know, you use that heat gun on top of that metallic surface and sometimes delamination or on like the gold one is going to change different colors, but maybe it wouldn't matter a little bit, you know, if we have like this holographic shining down here, but when you heat up this, uh, metallic gold it starts to get that kind of rainbowy effect like greens and reds and things like that which looks kind of cool if you want to uh <clears throat> have it there purposefully but um i i i you know unless i'm doing it all the time i don't think i'm going to be able to control that and then on the foils to it it tends to warp you know those uh, metallic surfaces a lot more um when you're embossing on them Okay, but you know, you can do that. You can boss on cardstock or something like that, you know. And I think it'd be pretty cool like like do everything like this, but then do that thicker embossing of the reeds. Like when you're all done with everything, then stamp in your reeds in your whatever embossing ink or whatever and put the powder on those and then have those reeds kind of really stick out. Um it might not be in a ref, you know reflection card format, but just having something dimensional like that, or I don't know, maybe if you're doing like we were talking about, you know, if you're doing these trees, maybe in white over the top of uh, like a blue cardstock, like a dark blue cardstock, maybe that would be kind of interesting to really have them stick out in like a white, you know, embossing. Uh, um, ink. Who, who was doing that? Someone did some embossing recently and they were talking about, um, they were telling me that, and I forgot about this because I haven't done a lot of embossing before, but I did black ink and I used clear embossing powder, like detailed embossing powder on top of it. But then it makes the black ink look a lot lighter in tone. But then when you go with black detailed embossing powder over black ink it kind of it doesn't have that nice kind of smooth kind of embossed shiny kind of look you know i don't know or unless there's different types of you know black embossing powder so i don't know i need to play around with that again you know i, I kind of experimented with the embossing for like i don't know like two weeks or I don't know, it's two and a half weeks like a, I think it's been about a year now or something like that. But um, I don't know. I like I really like the look of some of it. But on some of it, um, where I wanted objects to stand out, like I said, 
it made them look lighter, you know, uh, for some reason. I, my, I speculated that maybe the clear embossing powder was diluting somehow the black ink that was applied and it was like just turning it into like a you know 90 percent gray instead of you know whatever 90 98 percent gray or whatever or, you know closer to black like that let's say is it similar to gilding flakes i don't know what gilding flakes are you know uh caroline yeah we need to do that's a uh, winter i haven't done a winter scene for a while i need to do that now, I'm trying to usually try to work a little bit of ahead of the curve, but I, I don't know, I didn't hear. I'm looking at something like this. Yeah, this is fall here. I was going to put some uh, something down in this uh, texture. Man, it is pouring rain outside right now. Yeah, I'm going to do something right here. I'm going to add in a little bit of a... Uh, all highlights down here. See if I you get around talking a little bit here. It's like a. I look at my scenes more and more. It's like, oh, I need to add this back into there. Or I forgot to do something, you know? One of the things, if you ever do kind of a white on, you know, you ever stamp at anything like white on top of dark? And then. But the white isn't really that white, you know? It's not real opaque so you get the colors showing through it but then what you do you kind of use it to your advantage and um, you go back into it with your white like acrylic paint pen and then you add in like little highlights on the white so it's a, like a whiter white than that ink and then you can give your um, um, branches and things like that your trunk a little bit more dimension yeah, that looks better like that. I just added in these little white little uh, highlights into that uh, grassy area like that. I don't know. I don't know if you can really see it here, but um, it adds a little bit more texture to that um, grassy look up there. But look how much warmer this bottom part looks. Of course, this is on the uh, the foil like this, but that little gold reflection is like shining right up in that pocket like that. And it looks a little bit different with every angle like this too. For me, these reflection cards, I think, I don't know, it might be the novelty of the reflection, but when I'm looking at these pieces, I'm not looking up here. I think I look down in this area like 70%, you know, to like 30% like that. I'm looking at that reflected area. So it's like the mirrored, you know, kind of area that I'm, you know, that's kind of dominating, you know, that's the dominant uh, kind of focal point, for, focal area for me uh, when looking at them like that. Those leaves actually came from, oh, you ordered them from the U.S., wow. Was shipping, you know, reasonable then? Hello, Jeannie. Yeah, holographics like that. Hey, Jeannie, have you tried a holographic yet? It'd be kind of interesting to see kind of your technique of, uh, um, or just a mirrored card. If you did your technique up here, so I was talking about doing a uh, this composition up here, but I want it in like a windy type of situation. That would be like perfect for your um, um, technique. But then all you do is just throw that mirrored, you know, little area down below and, you know, you have like this wind, uh, I don't know, kind of area up here and you can put a few little flowers, uh, I mean, not flowers, but um, leaves in the wind and that would be kind of cool. Speaking of, speaking of wind, you know, Jeannie does these like movement pieces, you know, with these streaks of a... Uh, media and ink and white paint uh, that always looks like wind to me or some you know okay older products called flower i know what yeah 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 yeah. flower soft people started using that it was like uh flower soft i saw those on a lot of um winter scenes i think at some point in time right so i don't see that name like around too much 
I guess it's, cause it's an older product. Yeah, it was like 20 years ago or something like that, right? Similar to thicker embossing powder. Please crush them to a fine and glue on design. Hey, so Christine, uh, what did you, what did you glue the flower soft onto the piece with, you know? I mean, were you painting like some glue onto a scene or do you just use your glue applicator like with dots? You don't use like dots of glue, right? Oh, no reasonable shipping. What is a girl to do? Well, if you ever like shipping like a, if you're ever like um, ordering like several things, you know, uh, you can ship it to me and I'll consolidate it for you, you know, and then ship it. I say that, but then, uh, my gosh, this uh, one customer in Australia, I was consolidated, I must have consolidated six different companies' things for her order from all these different sellers, right? And I shipped off in one box, right? which saved her a ton of shipping and then it got lost you know and we thought it was gone it got to the final um uh delivery entity and it was like just gone and then like i don't know it was like two months late we were waiting and waiting and waiting you know and uh and then it finally showed up. I was like, thank God, you know. She was like so totally, totally cool about it, but um, <laughs> it was crazy because I think some of these things were like one-offs too. She, was, she also did uh, collected dolls too. And she was uh, having those sent to me. And then I also included those ones. Uh, thank God that one uh, showed up. But that was like the, one of the few times, you know, where it was like a little bit of a, I don't know, I don't know if I'd call it panic, but um, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't like injured either because on that method that I shipped out there, we kept it really cheap and it wasn't, uh, there wasn't like insurance on that one. Okay, there was a special glue. Okay, w w yeah, if anyone knows about that special glue to, you know, use on these things like Flower Soft or this uh, type of thing, let me know. Because uh, I was thinking, it seems like it doesn't seem like this is a, like a practical way to go about, you know, applying that super flaky, you know, that's what it sounds, I don't know. I don't know what Flower Soft look like, but that, that white um, glitter that I was just holding, or even that, you know, that, uh, that bagged one, you know what I mean? I mean, you can see, can it, you can see what the, see the, you know, this is not like that other type of glitter where it's like, I, I, it just seems it's like like really really thin and it's like see-through it's it reminds me of like a fish scale but thinner it's almost like powder you know to, to touch when you run put your finger into it and this here is like it's like super thin like plastic i guess and i guess that's how they do it they're punching it out of this this is almost like in the mix of these hexagonal shapes um and there's like a couple different sizes of it, but it's like the rest of it is like dust in there, like literally like dust um, mixed in with that. So if we're going to use that on something, it's like, how do you do it? It almost seems like it would be better to have like some kind of like waxy type of thing or, you know what I mean, that you put on your finger and, you know, you kind of like put a little streak of it somewhere and then just sprinkle that like almost like powdery dust on there or something like that and just tap off the rest or something like that. I don't know, but I need to, uh, I don't know. I need to get some ideas on how to, how to, how to use this stuff. Cause I've, you know, I've never used it before. So I don't know. It, it, it just seems like in theory, it's just like, a that and, uh, like things like these, I, like I have these glow in the dark powders that I want to experiment with too, but I'm thinking I'm not, I don't know if I'm using this uh, you know the way that you're supposed to be using it. There's probably videos out there too, 
but this one's like literally like like they're like like fine dust but i have a bunch of these that i want to experiment with too i just used this the standard glue i think last time i think i painted it on with a brush but um but that was for the powder though you know so i don't know if these other kind of thicker things um you know if that's going to be the way to do it yeah yeah just let me know great um yeah, but uh, like shipping off, like if that was like one thing out there, that must be in uh like really expensive for the uh, yeah, the leaves. But I gotta think, you know, I gotta think the leaves. You can find that out there because there's a lot of you know model railroad enthusiasts, you know, all over the world um, for things like those leaves. Like look up like some kind of hobby, um, like modelers. I know it might be extremely expensive, but you know we're all getting it from the same place. I'm sure all this. I'm guessing all these types of things are probably made in China these days. So um, you might be able to find like modelers um, types of supplies, model railroad um, supplies. Um, you know, uh, more readily available than getting it you know, like imported. You know, or something like that. There's probably some distributor for all those types of things and somewhere out you know closer to you at least all right anyways thanks for jumping in on this uh, impromptu piece thanks for checking it out and seeing my little experiment here with the leaves like that. It looks a little busy. This one's a little bit busy here, but um, I don't know, it was still really fun to do. And it's pretty easy to do too, you know? Um, I wouldn't call it minimal, but um, when you think about it, there's not a whole lot to this one. It's just, you know, it's a fairly large card in the half page, you know, kind of working my coloring up there, a little bit, something like that. But if it's done, like I said, in a, quarter page card you know with this little area down here just a few impressions in those leaves down there um you know it's not too complex of a card but i think in terms of the overall look if you sent this card out to someone you know with all that kind of reflective thing like that especially if they haven't seen like a reflection card of the you know holographic like that i think they would be uh you know they i think they'd be pretty uh uh i think it would it would it would it's an attention getter, <laughs> which is what we want, right? You know? All right. Thanks, everyone. Hope to see you on the next live stream.